of recovery, what is dear to us in our language. I must tell you, it's not an easy journey. I hope you would have picked that up. <clears throat> you will encounter all sorts of difficulties in your journey to recover your language first, your music, your chants, your prayers, your customs, and the hearts of your people. And you would have heard the special way that we have taken and we've gone back to the hearts of our children and, and fostered this recovery there. Probably our biggest challenge is to try and bring our people back, to try and make them realize that what has been lost through no fault of theirs mm -hmm. um, through this process of assimilation is, is a huge sacrifice. And it's often not till it's too late that a lot of our people turn around and say, oh yes. And so many of our young people we found here get into trouble because they don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, our job of teaching is a, it has so many spokes to it. There's so many reasons why we should be doing it. At the end of the day, if we can do nothing else but build the self-esteem of our children, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're giving them a, a, a great koha, a great tong, mm -hmm. a great gift. Revival of it and the holding it steady has been because our own people took it up and started off with the young people, Kohangareo. If it wasn't for Kohangareo, the languages would have died. It is not the universities that saved them, nor the teachers' colleges. For the teachers in the secondary school, it must come from inside, from the homes, from the young children that are born, and then going through when they grow, so that they have real or language as part of their very being from the time they were born until they are 10 years old and older. Then the language is safe. I spent my whole life not knowing who I am. Um, my father is white, my mother is a Māori, and he chose to ignore that side of me. And he still does. 
What do you know? But who? But I'm, I, in one week, I think for one week, I've spent my life sort of wandering around, wondering what I'm going to do. And one week, I know where I'm going. But it's amazing. You know? I've come here, I, I just love doing this so much, just the far note, everything. I want to go out and I want to be a teacher. I want to teach our English. And I think of that in one week. From being here, it's just like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And I say, don't give up. Don't give up. And it's about all of us joining together as brothers and sisters in, as Indigenous people and walking together and supporting one another. And whatever Kohangaru can give to help you people find and hopefully bring back your language so it doesn't die. We don't want it to end up like the moa in, in New Zealand, the moa is the, a bird that's died now. And so uh, it's the dream and aspirations of our elders. 20, 24 years ago, that actually saw the decline in Te Reo Māori, our language. And you know, you aren't a person, you aren't a tribe, you aren't a people, unless you've still got your language.